Carlos Correa in the lineup for the first time this spring for the Twins, wearing the road helmet with the home unit. I'm not sure what's going on there. Anyway, this was the lineup. We're going to talk about this batting order and the defensive alignment a little bit later. Uh, but first, the highlights. Bailey Ober started this one for the Twins and looked really good. Uh, only an inning, but man, did he look good. And he looked good in his first outing. Uh, on the outside, looking into this current five-man rotation, assuming that they're going to stick with five, but... Whew, man, this guy, again, is looking really good. He pitched well last year when healthy, so uh, I guess not too surprising. Here, Carl, Carlos Correa's first spring at bat. He gets a single. Uh, just nice to see him out there. Played shortstop, played three innings. The DH today was Christian Vasquez, a, a new twin, expected to be the primary catcher. Uh, great to see him out there and playing. Uh, Ryan Jeffers was behind the plate, and we'll see a little bit from him in just a moment here. But uh, Christian Vasquez also keeping things loose in the dugout here uh, as the Bally Sports North broadcast cut to the dugout. Yohan Duran looking like Yohan Duran. K skipping everything. So good to see him looking good early on, throwing over 100. Uh, Ryan Jeffers, again, he was the catcher today. He went deep off a lefty, which, you know, he's going to see a lot of playing time against lefties, I think. Later on in the game, I always like to sneak in some highlights of these minor leaguers. This is Kalai Rosario, an outfielder who was in Fort Myers last year, gets a single. Uh, You know, nothing too notable here. Just kind of want to get you some good video while we have it uh, of this guy. And then in a 4-2 ball game in the ninth inning, the Twins score two runs here on a pass ball. That's Alex Isola, a first baseman slash catcher, scoring all the way from second base. Respect the hustle. But that is how it ended in a 4-4 tie. This is not a new rule. Don't freak out. There's not going to be ties in the regular season. Just a spring thing. Let's take a look at some of the other information here. So as promised, we're going to circle back to this lineup. A couple things, and you know, I think this is an area you can pull some information out of in spring training. Hard to know what to, to react to and what not to. But I do think we are going to see Joey Gallo bat leadoff some against right-handed pitchers. Maybe even be the primary leadoff guy. And I know, I know he's not the prototypical leadoff hitter. Um, I don't think the Twins really have a prototypical leadoff hitter um, in this organization right now that, that's projected to be at the major league level. Uh, some people may say Byron Buxton because of his speed, but he's also just such a powerful hitter um, that, you know, I don't know that that's the case. Gallo also, as opposed to Buxton, takes a, a lot of pitches. He has long plate appearances. He draws walks. Um, so I think this is, it's it's not the perfect fit, but it's not completely unnatural either. It's interesting. Um, I think we'll see that some. Him playing first base is another thing I thought was interesting. You know, with Kirilov not quite up to speed to be playing in games yet, um, we may see some some different names there. And I think he, he may end up playing there a, a decent amount, you know, depending, again, on what happens with Alex. And, you know, when we looked at the projections, that was the position that the Twins projected to be the worst in. Um, so that could be a really pivotal position. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have put it past Edouard Julien uh, playing there a bunch. You know, a guy who had two home runs yesterday, great minor league numbers, and, you know, not a first baseman by trade, but near neither was Luis Arise. So, you know, don't count him out of that picture. Carlos Gray hit second. You know, I think that's going to be a pretty uh, consistent spot for him. After that, I don't think we can react to much because, you know, some of so few of the regulars were in the lineup. Uh, but do want to point out that Michael A. Taylor was in left field with Nick Gordon in center. I would imagine if, you know, during the regular season on days Buxton was unavailable or DHing, those two would be flip flopped with Taylor in center and Gordon in left. But I'm guessing they're trying to get Taylor some looks in left because, yeah, you know, center field like the back of his hand, gold glove center fielder. Uh, hasn't played a ton of left though lately, so he needs some more experience out there. On the flip side, I guess I was surprised a bit that Farmer was at second and Elliot Soto. Uh, a minor leaguer who was with the Saints mostly last year, was at third. Um, if you would have told me to guess between those, I would have flip-flopped him probably. Uh, but we'll talk about Jose Miranda in just a sec. Uh, nothing too big to react to there, uh, but just thought that was interesting. Bailey Ober, again, he looked great, and I just wanted to point out his fastball was 1.7 miles per hour above where it was sitting last year. He topped out at 94.2, averaged 91.5 last season. In addition to lineups and def- defensive alignments, I think velocity is another big thing that we can look at in spring training and say it's a pretty big deal. i uh, love to see that he got seven swing- swinging strikes on 23 pitches in this outing. On the flip side, Jorge Alcala. Oh, man. Oh, this is killing me. This is killing me. It's only March 1st. It's only March 1st. But to see him averaging 93.2 miles per hour on his fastball is painful. This is a guy who should be... 97, 98 when it's going right. Um, you know, a, a big time, you know, upside sleeper guy who could s- 
change the fate of the bullpen, in my opinion. Jorge Alcala, you know, it's it's not time to like give up or anything, but I would certainly like to see him throwing harder. Cole Sands gave up a home run in this one, but he is throwing harder, 1.8 miles per hour above his average from last year. He topped out at 95.8 miles per hour in this one. Um, I know a lot of people at first look at him, didn't like what they saw. I don't blame him. I'm not giving up on this guy. He got recalled, I think, seven times last year, just really had a crazy year. Um, and I mean, that's probably going to be life for him as like the 28th, 29th man. Um, so that's just, you're going to have to figure it out. You're going to have to find a way to stick. But um, I think there's there's something interesting there. Also, I should mention, don't have the numbers on it, but Trevor McGill pitched well. He's a guy who got his teeth kicked in in his first outing. Uh, so it's good to see him come back. And updating an item that we talked about on Monday, members, on Member Monday, which is going to be a thing now. Every Monday I'm going to have a special members-only video. It's only $1.99 to join that. Uh, We talked about the broadcast situation a little bit. Dave St. Peter was on the broadcast and talked about it some more here. You see Hannah Kaiser uh, from Yahoo shared some information that he gave. Uh, Basically kind of makes it sound like this is going to be a win-win for baseball fans either way, no matter how that shakes out. And the, the other thing I heard on the broadcast, he did commit to, you know, they've been working, I think both the Twins and Major League Baseball have been working with Bally to make sure, it doesn't sound like there's any, nobody has to be insecure at all about, you know, losing coverage one way or another this in the middle of this season, so um, things are definitely up in the air things are, you know, kind of developing all the time, so we'll see what happens but um, Dave kind of made, made it seem like everybody kind of kind of chill out about that situation at the moment, and you know we'll see what happens. It'll again it'll be ongoing. So with Correa making his spring debut, I wanted to relay uh, the players who I would project to be on the opening day roster who have not made their 2023 Grapefruit League debuts. That is Kirilov, Polanco, Buxton, Solano, Gray, Thielbar, and Pagan. Um, there's really no reason to uh, be nervous about those guys yet. Um, you know, some of them had off-season surgery. Some of them are new to the organization, like Donovan Solano. Um, so there's not. Re- it's just just keep an eye out. Just keep an eye on it. It's something to be aware of. Those guys, other guys, we haven't seen yet. And then Jose Miranda, who we have seen, Nick Nelson was among the reporters in Fort Myers from Twins Daily. Uh, reports that the Twin Miranda, excuse me, will not be playing in the World Baseball Classic uh, because of ongoing shoulder issues that is preventing him from playing third base. But he is supposed to D. H tomorrow, so um, I would be a little concerned if he was not participating in spring games at all because of this, but um, you know, at least he's hitting, you know it's not great that he's playing third, but again, the point I've kind of made about him moving to third base is actually he's going back home to third base. The the position change for him was moving to first. Um, Third is back to his home, so um, would would much rather, feel much better about him playing third base than, than not being available to. But um, you know, again, this is another one. Just be aware of it for now. It's March first. Don't need to freak out, but something to be keep an eye out for for sure. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, thank you to all the channel members here, the premium members listed here. Against one dollar ninety nine cents a month helps me out, especially get through the off season here. Thank you all so much. We'll talk again soon.